once we're born again, folks, we become, he said, the salt of the earth. And when we become the salt of the earth, and he is the spirit, and he lets us know that the spirit is the water. He stood on John 7 and 37 on the great day of the feast. And he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and do what? Glug, 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 drink of the waters of life freely. This Jesus spake of the Spirit. In Jeremiah 2 and 13, he said, Israel, you've not just done one, you've done two evils. You've rejected me. See, that's how we know it was Jesus in the Old Testament, because he showed up in the New Testament and let him know I am the fountain of living water. Same fountain of living water that spoke to Israel and to Jeremiah said, you've rejected me, the fountain of living water, and dug into yourselves cisterns, but they're broken cisterns. They can hold no water. So this thing you're hoping to drink from that you've created in the world, oh, that's what I'm going to drink from. This wonderful career, this wonderful sport, this wonderful whatever it is that is taking and occupying your time versus getting a drink from the fountain of living water is not going to quench your thirst. And on the day of judgment, when you stand in front of the Lord, you will not have a good answer. He's going to say, you rejected me. You reject. It'll go down in, in the annals of heaven that you rejected the Savior. So stop rejecting him. The spirit, when I bond with that spirit in the new birth, in the baptism of my mind, believing first that he is who he said he was, that Lord, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, Emmanuel, God manifested in the flesh, God with us. At that point, my mind is baptized. He says, now we've got to get your body baptized. Acts 2.38 says, repent and be baptized. Metaneo, turn away from your sins. Stop doing it. Everybody say, turn away. Yeah, you got to turn around and start walking the other direction. And, and I heard a voice behind me that said, this is the way, walk you in it. That meant he was going the wrong way. He, he says, I, this is the way, walk you in it. Oh, okay, going the wrong way. And so once we're bonded with the Spirit, where does that happen at? Acts 2.38 says we repent and be baptized. Not some of you, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall, not might, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I've seen people repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. And because they hadn't spoken in other tongues yet, thought that they hadn't been baptized with the Holy Ghost. i got news for you. You can't do what it is is in your power. Repentance and water baptism and him not hold up his end of the bargain and baptize you with his spirit. I see it manifesting out of you. If you've not spoken in other tongues, I'll put at the end of that, Yet, because when he gets here, you won't be speaking English. The Bible says all the tongues are going to cease when that which is perfect is come. We're going to all speak one language, and it'll be his language. I believe it'll be a heavenly language. Because it can't be a language that this world has ever, ever wanted to use. It's got to be heavenly. He calls that an unknown tongue, right? So once I bond with him, how do I know I'm bonded with him? This gets into literally spiritual chemistry. Uh, we understand chemistry in the natural. Now we've got to understand chemistry in the spirit that I'm bonded with him. Romans 6 and 5 says we are planted together. That means to be bonded together. The gardener has grafted this broken off branch back into the vine. And all of a sudden, that branch begins to produce this wild fig, this wild fig tree, this wild olive branch begins to produce different fruit. His fruit, the fruit of the spirit, uh, we're planted together. Colossians chapter 1, let's turn there. Colossians chapter 1, 26 through 29. Let's find out what happens when I have been born again. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 through 29. And if you haven't got a good shot of that, take a good shot of that so they can see that. Because once I become salt, here's what happens, folks. Here's the bonding that took place. We were separated from God. But at Calvary, he opened up the way, he opened up the door, gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. It says, whatever you loose, Peter, on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And on the day of Pentecost, at Acts 2.38, Peter told us how the plan of salvation was to be applied to our lives. Repentance, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And people say, well, I don't have to be baptized. And we all will say to them, no, you don't. But, of course, then you don't have to be in the bride. The bride does what he says do. She's, he's coming back after a bride that has made herself ready. She 
she's done, uh, Esther, she didn't just dress any old way. She asked the head chamberlain, how does he want me to dress? Everybody else got dressed the way they want, wanted to dress. They even got to keep all the trappings and the pretty dress and all. When they left, weeping and wailing, she said, how does he want me to, to get dressed? And he said, I want you to put on me. Because when we have put on Christ and you do that in water baptism, or whoever's been baptized in his name says, you have put on Christ. Colossians 1, where, is it, where did it go? Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, everybody say, but now, is made manifest to his saints. Madonna sings a song, says life's a mystery, everyone must stand alone, and all that stuff. Life is not a mystery. The mystery of the ages has now been revealed to the saints in life. Everyone's, uh, everyone is not going to stand alone, for Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. David said, Even if I make my bed in hell, you crazy wild person, he's there also. You're not there alone. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and at first he said, Alone, but then all of a sudden he goes, Ooh, you, thou art with me. I'm actually not alone. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, I, I've been bonded together with something not of this world. Christ in you, because Christ is that Holy Spirit, that Holy Ghost. And to say Holy Ghost lets you know and implies that if there's a Holy Ghost, there's, then there's unholy ghost. There's unholy spirit. There's spirits that want to be your guide, and you better try the spirits, as the Bible says, and see if they are of God. You know how you try a spirit? You try it with the word of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's jump to this. Salt, something not of this world, bonds with something, something of this world. I've got too many knots in there. Some of y'all, we got too many knots. Something of this world bonds with something not of this world. And when we do that, he says, now you are the salt of the earth. They had repented. They had been baptized. Then he breathed upon them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That was way before the day of Pentecost. When do you think they received the Holy Ghost? The day that he said, receive it. The day he speaks a word, whatever he speaks happens. And so the properties of salt, and if you're going to be taking chemistry and College and all that kind of stuff is a good thing to know because nonmetals go through a jagged line and bond with nonmetals, and when they bond, they're called salts, chemical salts. And as a fireman, I had to know that because if all of a sudden I begin to spray water on something that is a chemical salt, everybody say bad things can happen because a chemical salt is water reactive. And I got news for the devil when he comes in like a flood. <laughs> Oh, it comes in like a flood and hits the salt that I am in Christ. All of a sudden, boom, there's an explosive reaction. Get thee behind me, Satan. The Lord rebuke you. Even the Lord. Yeah, I mean, you can just have at it with him. It, there's an explosive thing that happens when Satan comes in and tries to come in like a flood because I'm water reactive. But when the Spirit of God moves upon me, oh, there's another explosive reaction. It's like, whoo, glory. Thank you, Jesus. And you see people that are normally nice and quiet and reserved, but when the Spirit gets upon them, woo, boy, they'll do things that they never would do because we are water reactive. Anyway, I jumped down there. Let me start right up here. Properties of salt. One, it's immiscible, which means it dissolves in the presence of water. It dissolves in water. That's why John said the Spirit's here. His presence is here. I must decrease so that Christ can increase. Two, salt won't evaporate. After I take a bunch of big bag of salt and put it in a 55-gallon drum and swig it around and it dissolves in the water, then I let the barrel sit out in uh, the sunshine and it just bakes and all the water's pulled back up by the, the heat of the sun. The salt doesn't evaporate with the water. Guess where the salt stays? In the barrel. Salt won't evaporate even though it dissolves in water. It won't evaporate. So in other words, you know what that tells me, saint of God, that's become dry and crusty, and you ain't been drinking of his spirit? It lets me know that just because 
you're not full of the Spirit anymore, you're still salt. Look out. Don't let the Spirit get back on you because immediately there will be a response. You don't stop being salt. The Holy Ghost is not a jack-in-the-box. Once you're His, you're His. Nothing can take you out of my hand. You're the salt of the earth. It's the master chemist teaching chemistry to a bunch of simple people. Many of them maybe uh, had no idea what he was teaching them. But it won't evaporate. In other words, when the, spirit, you, the Spirit's been off you, how many experience a dry spot where you hadn't been in the Spirit of God for a long time? Didn't stop you from being salt. You're still salt. Isn't that good to know? I, and all it takes is a little, little breath of the Spirit of God. And all of a sudden, that hot coal, woo, it rekindles. That's what firemen, we hated to have a rekindle. That meant you didn't do a very good job putting out the fire. Satan, I got news for you. You can't put this fire out. Anyway, uh, it won't evaporate. Salt conducts power. If you, uh, if you put bare electric wires down in distilled water, an item on the other end will not react to it because there's no salts in the water to conduct the power. But if there's salts in the water, you better not be in that water or you'll be electrocuted. Okay? So salt conducts power. Here's the unique thing. Once you apply power, once power is applied to salt, it becomes, everybody say chlorine. It becomes chlorine. And what is it that we use in the laundry room to get the stains out? Chlorine. We use bleach to get the stains out. Uh, uh, can we turn, uh, Luke, chapter, where did we go? Luke chapter nine, 10, verse 19. What did we just read? He says, and I give unto thee, everybody say power. So now... Through the Holy Ghost, he's applying power to the salt that you are. And guess what happens then? A chlorine effect occurs. Though my sins be scarlet. Oh, but when I get into the power and the presence of God, it becomes chlorine. Your sins, those scarlet become white as snow. But it takes power. Everybody say it takes power. It takes power. Power applied, it becomes chlorine. But power lifted up off the salt, it goes right back to being, everybody say salt. Ooh, I want you to know who you are in Christ. You're a new creature in Christ. Can't nothing change you. Can't nothing take, uh, take it away from you. You're always salt. Just be careful and don't lose your savor. Oh, don't lose your savor. I like to say don't lose your savior. Don't forget who he is. Five, water. It's water reactive. It's explosive. That can be... Bad for the enemy who comes in like a flood or wonderful in the presence of the Lord that all of a sudden praise explodes out of me. And sometimes he'll do it in places that it'll kind of embarrass you. And guess what? He's not embarrassed. He said, don't be ashamed of me in front of me and I won't be ashamed of you. All right. Uh, salt, liquid sodium is used to cool nuclear reactives. Not only can it cause heated reactions, but it can cause a cooling reaction. In other words, just like the manna, whatever it is you want me to be, whatever it is you need me to be, that's the I am that I am. That should have went boom like that. Whatever it is that you need him to be, that's the I am that he is. He's my bread when I'm hungry and I won't take it back. He been my bread. And I just won't. And again, it gets into, he's my water when I'm thirsty. He's my bridge over troubled water. He's my lawyer in the courtroom. He's my doctor in the surgery room. Whatever it is you need him to be, that's the I am that he is. My God, he can be explosive hot or he can cool you down. Sometimes I've needed cooling down. I've got out of line. Thank God there's saints of God that say, out of line. Peggy will say, out of line. I rebuke that spirit that's in you. Foul ball. Foul ball. <laughs> Yellow flag. I got news for you. Don't get offended. Iron sharpens iron. We're supposed to sharpen one another. Because sometimes we get dull. And it takes another brother, another sister, and it sharpens us back up. Amen. Look out, Satan. Look out. The beautiful thing, and I had it pasted up in the side of my fire helmet, is that salt won't burn. You can take salt and put an inch of it over a ham, 
Throw that ham into an incinerator. Turn it on because preachers just preach that we're the salt. We're supposed to make the world thirsty. No, no, no. We're the salt that's supposed to get the, get the message to the world that you've got to become salt. Not just get thirsty. You've got to become salt. Sometimes the world just wants the salt around close enough that if they get in trouble, they go, hey, would you all pray for me? They want you to keep being salt, and they want to keep being world. The Lord said, we are in this world, but we are not, we're not of this world. We are no longer in this world. We are hid in the veil. Aren't you glad we're hid in the veil of Christ? And it says, no man will ever know who you are ever again, and you'll never know another man by who you thought he was again. You know why? Because when we, can I borrow your glasses, David? Because when we get born again, we're supposed to look at everybody else with a new perspective through the spectacles of the Word of God. And now I don't see the fallen nature of man. Now I see a soul that needs God. I see someone that needs prayer. I see someone that I need to engage God for. We so quickly judge, jump in the seat of Moses and begin to judge one another. The Lord says, get out of that seat. Get on your knees. Pray for one another. Pray for yourself. Get the beam out of your own eye before I worry about the splinter in yours. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Salt won't burn. Come back a couple hours later, pull that tray out of the incinerator, and the only thing on the tray is going to be salt, and the ham's gone. So I look at the world and I say, don't be a ham. You've got to become the salt. How do I do that? Through Acts 2.38, he tells us where the transformation takes place. First, I heard the word. I believed the word. I received the word. I kept the word. I held on to the word. I wrestled with the word. I mean, y'all wrestled with the word. I wrestled with him before. And, uh, and then I was baptized. I repented of my sin. How many times? Over and over and over, however many times it takes. You repent, repent, repent till you stop doing what it is that you're doing. I have discovered that the more you repent, and get closer to God, the less that you will do, you begin, to, you begin to sin less. And that's what they call sinless. It actually means I begin to sin less. I never really get uh, totally away from it in this body because it's not been redeemed yet. I'm waiting for the redemption of the body because my body is just naturally drawn to sin, and so is yours. So we need a Savior. <laughs> Salt won't burn. Isaiah 43 says, when you walk through the fire, it will not kindle upon you. When you walk through the flood, it shall not overflow you. Why? Because God goes before us, and God is our rear guard. I present to you this morning the God that's able to keep you, that's able to transform you into a new creature in Christ. But I got news for you in this world of AI. Uh, if you walk, waltz up to AI and you haven't put God first, and you haven't put praise first. You haven't put his word first. You're going to be destroyed at the feet of AI. People are being destroyed at the feet of texting, of Facebook, of all Twitter, of, of all these different things. We're falling, falling, falling because all of a sudden we forget about God. Don't forget about God. If you'll put God first, when you get to AI, the next time you'll win. You got to know it. You'll fall at the feet of AI. It was a type and shadow of the old days of a reality that we have in our hands today and all around us. And it can be used for good. But if you come before it and you haven't put God first, you will fall at its feet. We're in a dangerous time. And we're back to the age again where we don't know each other's number. All we know is each other's name. And we should be at a time, religious world, Christian world, when you begin to remember the name of Jesus. I stood in a place the other day as prayer was said over this man and not one mention of Jesus was made. I was stood at a place uh, and I sat there and I'm like, everything that we do in word or deed, we're supposed to do all in the name of Jesus. Ask what you will in my name. Over and over, stomping your foot, he's telling them, ask it in my name, do it in my name, go forth in my name, go to bed in my name. Get up in the morning in my name. Thank you, Jesus. I say his name probably a, a thousand times in a day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And this morning, for all of you, I thank you, Jesus. God bless you.